Okay, homework 6.4. We did a lot of evens. 2 through 16 even and 26 through 40 even, it looks like. So let's get to work. Factor the expressions on the left side of each equation and solve the equation. So let's factor this. So number 2 has this equation. x cubed plus 64 equals 0. Well, we can really write that as x cubed plus... 4 cubed equals 0. And if you remember, our a cubed plus b cubed, I'm not going to write this every time because we're going to use it a lot, is a plus b, in parentheses, a squared minus ab plus b squared. Just got to remember that. So, our a so this could be factored out to x plus 4, in parentheses, x squared minus 4x plus 16, which equals 0. Okay. And then it says we must solve for the equation. So let's look. Can we, can we factor the right one anymore or no? You know, that's the question you got to ask yourself. Can we factor it anymore or no? So looking at it, I'm going to say, no, we're just going to use the quadratic. So what makes this equation 0 right here? What makes that part 0? It would be negative 4. Okay, this part, I'm going to highlight in yellow. Let's use the quadratic. The quadratic is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. What's our b value? Negative 4, so that'd be 4 plus or minus. Negative 4 squared is 16. Okay, minus 4 times ac, so that'd be 4 times 1 times 16 all over 2a, which would be 2. So that can simplify to equals to 2 plus or minus 16 minus 4 times 1 times 16 would be square root of 16 minus 64 over 2, which would equal 2 plus or minus 16 minus 64 would be 48. So the square root of negative 48 over 2. Well, what can we factor out of the negative 48? Negative square root of negative 48 is really i times square root of 16 times square root of 3. So that'd be i4 square root of 3. So it'd be 2 plus or minus 4i square root of 3 over 2, which would be written 2 plus or minus, we can cancel the, that out, to make it 2i square root of 3. So there's your answer set. We'll rewrite it. You could have negative 4 comma 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 3. Okay. Next one we have to work is number 4. We get 2x cubed minus 250 equals 0. Well, what can we factor out before we get on? Well, we factor out a 2 by inspection. So I'm left with x cubed minus 125 equals 0. Well, again, I'm not going to do this every time, but if you get your a cubed minus your b cubed, you can get a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. So can we get that in a cubic? Yes. So 2 x cubed minus 5 to the third equals 0. So we can rewrite it to all right, x minus 5, looking at the equation I wrote in the upper right hand corner, x squared plus 5x plus 25. Okay. All that still is equal to 0. So we have one solution right here. x has to equal 5 to make that happen. The other one, we're going to use the quadratic again. So we're going to use negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac 
over 2a. Okay, well our b value is 5, so it would be negative 5 plus or minus the square root 25 minus 4 times a times c, which would be 100, all over 2a, which would be 2. So that simplifies down to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 75 over 2. Okay, well the square root of 75, put that in a different color pen so we can see it, the square root of negative 75 is the same thing as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Well, square root of negative 1 is i, square root of 25 is 5, and square root of 3 is as simple as it can go. So you can replace that for that term. So simplify it one more time. It would be negative 5 plus or minus 5i square root of 3 all over 2. So I have three solutions. I'll write them down here again. 5, okay, and then negative 5 plus or minus 5i square root of 3 all over 2. Those are your three solution sets. Okay, going on. Number 6. I got 27 x cubed plus 1 equals 0. Okay, using our cubics, that is nothing more than 3x cubed plus 1 cubed equals 0. So we can rewrite this as 3x plus 1 in parentheses, a squared, so that would be 9x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals to 0. Okay, by inspection, we know one of the values, this x, to make it a to make it a zero value, x would have to equal negative one over three. So that's one equation. The other one, let's put in the quadratic. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four a c over two a. Our b value, negative b, is three, so negative three. So it'll be positive three plus or minus. Our b squared value is 9 minus 4 times a times c. Well, 4 times 9 is 36 and c. So it would be minus 36 all over 2. And our a value is 9. Okay. So that's going to be 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 27 all over 18. So we can simplify this again in a different color pen. I'll show you the square root of negative 27. The square root of negative 27 is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Square root of a negative 1 is i. Square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 3 is still square root of 3. So we've simplified this to 3 plus or minus 3i square root of 3 over 18 which we can factor out a 3 across the board, so make it a little bit nicer. So we can say 1 plus or minus i square root of 3 over 6. So our solution set is negative 1 third and 1 plus or minus i square root of 3 over 6. Next one, number eight. We got x cubed minus 27. So we can rewrite that as x cubed minus 3 cubed. Okay, so that's a negative. So we can go into x minus 3, x squared plus 3x plus 9. So one value by inspection we know is x equals 3. The rest of it we're going to have to just use the quadratic. And again, you should be getting familiar with this. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. 
our b value is a positive 3, so that's going to be a negative 3, plus or minus. Okay, b squared would be 9. 4ac, so that would be 4 times 1 times 9. So 4 times 9 is 36. 2a. Well, a is 1, so it would just be 2. So it's going to reduce to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 27 all over 2. And from the last example, we already proved the square root of negative 27. Okay, and I'll do it again just, just so we see it. The square root of negative 27 breaks down to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 3, which can simplify to i3 square root of 3, which written in standard form is 3i square root of 3. So we're going to plug that in where we see the square root of 27. So negative 3 plus or minus 3i square root of 3 over 2. So our solution sets is this and 3. So it would be 3 comma negative 3 plus or minus 3i square root of 3 over 2. So our solution set should be those three for that particular number. Okay, going on. Number 10. All right. I got x to the fourth minus 12x squared plus 11 equals 0. Now remember, since there's no cubic, since there's only a square and a quartic, or something to the fourth power and the second power, we can treat this just like a quadratic. So we can set up our x factor. The two uh, factors have to have a product of 11 and a sum of negative 12. Well, negative 11 and negative uh, 1 have a product of 11 and a sum of negative 12. So we could write x squared minus 11 and x squared minus 1. Okay, so each of those halves to equal, um, halves to equal uh, 0. So, on the far right one, x could be 1 or negative 1 to solve that. And all you have to do is set those equations to 0 if you don't see it. So let's just do that one real quick so everybody's on the same page. x squared minus 1 has to be equal 0. So add 1 to each side. So x squared equals 1. So x is equal plus or minus the square root of 1. Well, the square root of 1 is just 1. So x equals plus or minus 1. Okay. And this one. We just have to say x squared equals... Sorry x squared minus 11 equals 0. So x squared equals 11. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 11. So our solution set is plus or minus 1 or plus or minus square root 11 or you could write it all out. 1, negative 1, square root 11, negative square root 11. That's your solution set right there for number 10. Number 12, x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 16. Again, since you have a uh, something to the fourth and something to the second, you can treat it like a quadratic. You can set up your uh, x factor if you need to. It has a product of 16 and a sum of negative 8. Product of 16 and a sum of negative 8. So it would be two negative numbers. So negative 4 and negative 4 seem to work. So x squared minus 4 times x squared minus 4. So we can set this equation for us really quick. We can set the equation. Or we could look before we go any farther. And we could simplify it even more if you wanted to. You say this is x plus 2 times x minus 2, which is equal to x plus 2, which is the x minus 2. So your answers would be x is equal to 2 or negative 2. Okay, but let's say you didn't see that. You can just set your equation to 0, x squared minus 4 to 0. 
what I'm talking about now is if you didn't see that that's a perfect square again and you could factor it, just set this equation and solve. Add 4 to each side, so x squared equals 4. So x equals the plus or minus the square root of 4, which is equal to plus or minus 2. Either way, you get it solved. Number 14, x to the 4th plus 13x squared plus 36 equals 0. Again, since you have a square and a, and a to the 4th power, you can treat it like a quadratic function. So you need a product of 36 and a sum of 13. So that could be, usually 9 times 4 when I do it multiplies to be 36 and they sum to 13. So you can say x squared plus 9 and x squared plus 4. Okay, so you can't factor those any further, so you can just set those two equations to zero and solve. So x squared is going to equal negative 9, so you square root each side, so x equals the plus or minus the square root of negative 9, which is equal plus or minus i, or 3i. Okay, because remember, square root of negative 9 is nothing more than the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9, which is reduces to i and a 3. So x will equal plus or minus uh, 3i. So we look at the next equation. x squared plus 4 equals 0. Going to subtract 4 to each side, so x squared is going to equal to negative 4. Going to square root, so x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. Well, the square root of negative 4 is really the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 which that sum flies to i and a 2, so 2i. So x is equal to plus or minus 2i. So our solution set for this entire thing is x is equal to plus or minus 3i, and x is equal to plus or minus 2i. So let's rewrite it. x equals 2i, negative 2i, 3i, negative 3i. So there's your four solutions. Okay, number 16. We have x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 4 equals 0. Sorry, that's minus 4 equals 0. Since it's a squared and a, and a, and a to the fourth power, we can treat it like a quadratic. So we need something that has a product of negative 4 and a sum of positive 3. So that would be 4 and negative 1. So you could write it as x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 4. Okay. And now we just solve for it. Well, we've had these two before, but we'll go ahead and, and finish the deal out. x squared minus 1 can really be rewritten as x plus 1 and x minus 1. Okay, this one can't be rewritten, so we'll just drop it x squared plus 4. So our x values here would be x equals negative 1 to solve that one, and x is 1 to solve that one. Over here, we just set this equation to 0. x squared plus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4 to each side, we get x squared equals negative 4. x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. So we've done this before, so x equals plus or minus 2i. So our solution set would be there and there. So x would equal 1, negative 1, 1, negative 2i, positive 2i. And again, you have to have four answers because you have something to the fourth power. Okay, next problem. We're rocking along. Number 26. Number 26. All we've got to do with number 26 is factor. 28, 30, and 32, all we have to do is factor these. So let's look. x to the 4th minus 8x squared plus 15. Again, since I have a squared and something to the 4th, we can treat it like a quadratic. So I have 15 and negative 8. So I need two numbers that multiply to 15 have a sum of negative 8. 
I can see by inspection that'd be negative 5 and negative 3. So x squared minus 5 times x squared minus 3. Okay. That's all we have to do with that one. That's all the question asks us for. 28. x cubed plus 1. Well, that's our cubic. If you remember the cubic rule, you can rewrite that as x cubed plus 1 cubed if you need to. So you're going to have x plus 1. That's your a plus b. x squared minus x plus 1. That's your solution. You just need to remember your cubic rules, just like you had to remember your quadratic rules before. Okay. Easy enough. Going to 30. Getting there. x to the fourth plus 10x squared plus 9. Since it's a squared and a quartic, something to the fourth power and the second power, we can treat it like a quadratic. We need something that has a product of 9 and a sum of 10. A product of 9 and a sum of 10. Well, 9 times 1 is 9, and 9 plus 1 is 10. So that would be x squared plus 3, sorry, plus 9, and x squared plus 1. And again, all we had to do was factor for number 30. So x squared plus 9 and x squared plus 1. Okay, 32. x to the fourth plus 7x squared minus 18. So let's see. We need something that has a product of negative 18 and, and, a, uh, and a sum of 7. So 9 times negative 2 will get you a product of negative 18 and a sum of 7. So that would be x squared plus 9 and x squared minus 2. I do not believe we can go any further than that, so we will stop on that one. And there's your solution set for number 32. All right, the rest of these we have to factor and solve. So 34. We get 3x to the fourth plus 18x. No, plus 18 equals 21x squared. So let's subtract and get everything to one side and get it to zero. So let's rewrite this. 3x to the fourth minus 21x squared plus 18 equals zero. We can factor out a 3 by inspection. So I get x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 6 equals zero. Okay, because, again, it's a squared and a quartic, I can treat it like a quadratic, so I can use the x factor. I need two numbers that have a product of 6 and a sum of negative 7. So that would be negative 6 and negative 1. So we can rewrite this as x squared minus 6 and x squared minus 1. Okay, we can simplify the x squared minus 1 a little bit. So let's rewrite x squared minus 6. Okay. And then we got x plus 1 times x minus 1. Again, because that's a perfect square, we can do that. Okay, to solve this one right here, the x plus 1, x would have to be negative 1. For x minus 1, x would have to be 1. The other one, all we have to do is make it an equation. x squared minus 6 equals 0. x squared equals 6. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 6. So plus or minus square root of 6. So our solution set is negative 1, yeah, negative 1, 1, negative square root of 6, positive square root of 6. And that's our solution set for number 34. Okay, 36. Five x to the fourth plus 50x squared plus 80 equals 0. Well, the first thing by inspection, I can factor out a 5, so let's do that, 5. So that's x to the fourth plus 10x squared plus, I believe that would be 14. Nope, it would be 16. OK. 
Okay, since it's squared and a quartric, I can treat this as... What? What can I treat this as? I can treat this as a quadratic. So I need two numbers that have a product of 16 and a sum of 10. Well, 4 times 4 gets 16, but doesn't get 10. 2 times 8 gets 16 and gets 10. So, 2 and 8. So I can rewrite this 5. x squared plus... 8 times x squared plus 2 equals 0. Okay. So now we can't factor these any further. So we're just going to set them up for equations and solve for them. So x squared plus 8 equals 0. x squared equals negative 8. So x is going to equal plus or minus the square root of negative 8 which simplifies to x equals plus or minus. Um, basically, if you can remember this, 2i square root of 2. And I'll show you in just a second how I got that. I'll do it right here. The square root of negative 8 is nothing more than the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 2 is that. So there's part of your solution. For the second part of your solution, do the exact same thing. x squared plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2, so you get x squared equals negative 2. x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2. So x equals plus or minus i square root of 2. So our four solutions would be x, x equals... 2i square root of 2, negative 2i square root of 2, i square root of 2, and negative i square root of 2. You should have four solutions. Okay? 38. to the fourth equals 25. So we can say x to the fourth minus 25 equals 0. Okay, so what we're looking for in this one is we need something, we can treat this like a quadratic, that has a product of negative 25 and a sum of 0. Negative 5 times 5 is negative 25, and they have a sum of 0. So that would be x squared minus 5 and x squared plus 5. Again, set these equal to uh, 0, and you get x squared minus 5 equals 0. On this one, you get x squared plus 5 equals 0. So over here, you get x squared equals 5. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. That's two solutions. So we get x squared equals negative 5. So x equals plus or minus square root of negative 5. So x equals plus or minus i square root of 5. So there's our solution sets. So let's rewrite it one more time. So our x values for that is plus square root of 5 minus square root of 5 i square root of 5 negative i square root of 5 okay last problem I believe number 40 here's the equation x to the fourth plus 12x squared equals 8x cubed Subtract 8x cubed on each side. Let's rewrite. x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus x 12x squared equals 0. By inspection, I can pull out an x squared. So let's do that. So I pull out an x squared. I get an x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Okay. Now, we can factor this one pretty easily. We're looking for two numbers that have a product of 12 and a sum of negative 8.
product of 12 and a sum of negative 8, well, 12 and 1 won't work. But 6 and 2, if they're both negative, 6, negative 6 times negative 2 equals 12. Negative 6 plus negative 2 equals 8. So I have x squared, x minus 6, and all right, it would be x squared times x minus 6 times x minus 2. So our zero values would be 0. x minus 6, what would x have to be? 6. x minus 2, what would x have to be? 2. So our solution set is x equal to 0, 2, and 6. And that's your solution set for the very last one.